transform and move towards a knowledge society that facilitates development, that is pro-poor and pro-developmental. To make progress on this part, we will have to avoid the latest fads. We will have to be consistent with our political and social objectives. We will have to be mindful of our own interests and to guard against solutions that may be well-intentioned but come from outside of the developing world. This is a time for us to be bold. It is a time for us to be strategic. It is a time for us to use our diplomatic skills and our incredible intellectual resources to actually ensure that we can shape the knowledge society into one that benefits us. To do this, we will require leadership. I regard leadership as being a process by which visions, dreams, and aspirations are transformed into manifest realities. Leadership requires collective engagement, it requires sustained discipline effort, and it also requires an application of mental, emotional, and even spiritual facilities. Because it is not an authoritarian leadership that will actually create a leadership, a knowledge society that benefits all people. There is a particularly important role for the state, particularly because knowledge societies involve the application and dissemination of knowledge, and it requires considerable investment of resources to produce knowledge infrastructure. Politics is never absent at any stage in the creation of information society or knowledge society. And this means that the state, as in governments, will have a very important role in ensuring that public policy interests are protected. It is the government that can ensure that we have a balance between consumer welfare and supply benefit. It is only the government that can ensure that there is a judicious balance between the interests of different groups who are present in the creation of a knowledge society. If we rely only on market forces, we will find that the groups that continue to be left out of the knowledge society will continue to be left out for many years to come. <coughs> what are some of the things that states must do, therefore, to ensure that they can provide the kind of leadership that is required? There is a certain element in which developing country governments will need to build institutional capacity. They will need to create the kind of strategic thinking that we heard about yesterday to ensure that they manage and understand the technological trends that are at the heart of the knowledge society. More importantly, our governments will have to learn to listen and to be engaged with multiple stakeholders because the knowledge society and its creation is too important to be left up to one organization in society, even if it is the government. In, indeed, the governments must also do some internal housekeeping to ensure that the process of creating a knowledge society is not subject to day-to-day -day political interference and the, uh, the vagaries of electoral politics. This requires visionary leadership and it requires a new kind of government in intervention. The second point is innovation, which I define as the production, diffusion, and use of new and economically useful knowledge. Innovation is an imperative for creation of a knowledge society. Particularly in Africa and Asia, as we seek to balance economic growth with redistribution of wealth, we must be innovative in how we organize these processes. Innovation strategies, such as in countries like Ireland, Singapore, and a number of others, can provide useful models for how innovation can be managed both at the national level and within uh, different sectors of the society. There are particularly important characteristics of why innovation is important for a knowledge society. The knowledge society will require a strong IT sector, telecommunication services, broadcasting, and specialized content firms. The environment which leads to the creation of these innovative firms will involve strengthening our university systems, it will involve a 
allowing firms to uh, be creative, allowing firms and entrepreneurs to make mistakes. It will, it will require that our capital markets are also made more risk positive or risk friendly. Knowledge societies are creativity intensive. This will require that developing countries in Africa and Asia provide access to higher order thinking, analysis, as well as reflection. We are countries that are rich in wisdom. We may not have technologies, but we are rich in wisdom. And so it is incumbent on us as we create a knowledge society to define and to create and to shape a knowledge society that draws on the wisdom of ancient civilizations as well as technological artifacts. Therefore, innovation both in terms of our thinking as well as in the creation of technological artifacts is important. My final comments refer to those related to entrepreneurship. It is clear that the private sector needs to play an important role in the creation of a knowledge society. By entrepreneurship, I mean the process of business startup and supporting the growth of the private sector. Entrepreneurs are defined as those kinds of organizations or those kinds of individuals who can provide a catalyst to transformation of an economy. In Africa, we have many examples, particularly in the mobile communication sector, through uh, companies such as MTN and Celtel, now the Zane Group which actually provide very useful examples of how new firms can disrupt entire industries. Governments have had very little to do with some of the changes that, that have taken place in the mobile communication sector, but I believe that this sector actually provides a useful example of how African entrepreneurship can actually bring further uh, communication and integration between the continents of Africa and Asia, since we have seen geographic expansion of homegrown entrepreneurs simply because it makes good business sense. In closing, therefore, I want to add that we can play a role, we as in the people who are assembled in this room, the folks who will be looking towards creating a new mechanism for African and Asian solidarity, we can play a very important role in demonstrating that a knowledge society and an information and communications technology rich society can actually assist with development objectives. We can ensure that ambitious goals such as making sure that the digital divide is reduced need not be taken outside of a political context. Uh, many years ago, two decades ago, there were calls for a new international economic order. There were calls for more uh, uh, solidarity between the rich countries of the world and the South, as it was then referred to. And perhaps we are at a point where we need to reconsider those ambitious goals those calls for a particular kind of solidarity and to see our efforts to create a knowledge society in that regard. Thank you very much for your kind attention.